This is a demonstration of the Pathfinder control system for metal folding machines from AMS Controls. In today's demonstration, we're going to show just how simple it is to take a hand-drawn profile, draw that profile in Pathfinder, and then allow the SmartPath Auto Sequencer to sequence the profile for you. To begin with, what you might receive from your salesperson might be a hand-drawn profile with angles and dimensions something kind of like this. So we're going to take that drawing and we're going to create a profile in Pathfinder and then allow the Smart Path Auto Sequencer to sequence it for us. To start with, let's go ahead and open up Pathfinder. When Pathfinder loads, I will log in as an administrator and then create a brand new profile. From here I'm going to click the new button. I'm going to name my part. I'm going to call it bridge cap. And it's going to be a graphical part and it is going to be painted. I'm going to hit OK. You'll notice that Pathfinder starts us off with a segment and that segment defaults to one inch. Now in this case I know that this part has a hem and the portion of the hem underneath the part is only a half inch long. So I'm going to put in 0.5 inches and hit enter. At that point I need to add my hem and you'll notice that it appears on the drawing. Then I'm going to hit enter after that. Then I want to add a segment. That segment needs to be 1.75 inches long. And if you notice, after I hit the segment, Pathfinder automatically populated the dropdown with an angle feature. Pathfinder is going to alternate. Anytime I have a segment, it'll automatically show an angle for the next feature. Anytime I have an angle, it'll automatically show a segment for the following feature. In this case, because it's already here, all I need to do is hit enter, and it'll automatically add the angle for me. Notice that it defaulted to a segment after that. The default value for the angle is highlighted so that I can go ahead and change that value now. In this case, it needs to be 135 degrees. And when I hit enter, the segment is highlighted, so all I have to do is hit enter again, and it's ready to do another, another segment length and then another angle. So for this segment length, I know it's 3 quarters of an inch long, so I put in 0.75. Then I want to do another angle. This particular angle, I believe it, it looks like it's 90 degrees on the, on the drawing. And then I need a segment. Oh, wait a minute. That angle's going the wrong direction. So I know it's a 90 degree angle, but it needs to be flipped the other direction. So I'm going to go back to my angle, and I'm going to hit my switch button. And you'll notice that it switches from a 90 degree to a minus 90 degree. Now that's the correct angle. My segment needs to be 0.75 inches. And then I have another angle after that and that angle is 135 degrees then another segment 2.5 inches and another angle 60 degrees another segment 2 inches this time then another angle and this one I learned my lesson last time so I know this one's going to be a minus 45 and then a segment that segment is also 2 inches long this is a symmetrical part, so from here, from this point on around, it's going to be the same as, as all of these features on the other side. In another video, I'll show how you can take the, take the drawing from this point and automatically create the other half of it with a, a single click of the drop-down. But for right now, we're going to continue drawing it this way. After the 2-inch segment, I know I'm going to need another angle of 45 degrees. Then this is going to be another segment that's two and a half inches long. And then from there we have another angle of 135 degrees. And that's going to be three quarters of an inch long. 
Oh, it looks like I typed, I punched in the wrong value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my trash can and throw this one away. And I'm going to start over from here. And you'll notice that my segment, I can, I can click on the drawing to highlight my segment over here in the picture. So my last segment was two and a half inches long. And then I have a, an angle feature of 135 degrees. So I'm going to hit enter and then add a segment. That segment is going to be 0.75 inches. And then I'm going to add another angle. That angle is going to be a minus 90 degrees. And then another 0.75 inch segment. Then another angle of 135 degrees. Then another segment, 1.75 inches long. And then finally I need to add my closed hem. Now in this case I happen to know that I can punch in a 3 and it will give me the value for a closed hem from this list. So just to show you how that works, I will hit the 3 and then enter. And then I'm going to add my last little segment of half an inch to finish off my hem. One thing you may notice when I click on certain segments on this part is a small paintbrush icon that appears above the segment. That paintbrush icon indicates that that is the side where the paint will be. So if, for example, we want the paint to be on the other side, we highlight a segment and then click our switch button and you'll notice that the paintbrush moves to the other side of the segment. In this case, I know that I want it on the top part here, so I'm going to hit the switch button again and put it back. From here, what I want to do is I want to allow the Smart Path Auto Sequencer to sequence this part for me. So I'm going to click the Sequence button on the toolbar, and then Smart Path is going to kick off, and the computer is going to come up with what it thinks the best solution for sequencing this part would be. What you'll see here is you'll see the part flattened out with all the individual bends numbered and corresponding to the numbers on this thumbnail on the right hand side. The first sequence that the computer came up with is going to be highlighted in blue right here. And you'll notice that I can click on the steps of the sequence and it'll change the drawing to show what the part would look like in the machine for that particular sequence. Another thing we can do is we can hit the play button and animate that entire sequence. And you'll notice that as it animates, it also shows you which step in this list that it's on. Once it goes all the way through animating, we can then see where the interferences are going to occur. And if we think those interferences are acceptable, we can go ahead and choose that sequence. I'm going to go ahead and stop the animation. and. You're also going to see that there are other sequences available. I can scroll down and see that there are 10 sequences and when I click on one it'll tell me I'm on, I'm on sequence number 4 of 10. And on the left hand side you can see that there's a value associated with each sequence. That value is what we call a cost. The lower the cost, the fewer the handling operations and the less interference you'll probably have in the sequence. So I'm going to pick the lowest cost sequence and I'm going to accept it. It's going to load. It's going to automatically create all the machine steps for that particular set of sequences and it's going to be ready to go. The only, the only thing I need to do now is hit the play button and you'll notice that the very first thing that happens is the painted side icon appears and it says painted side down. So I know at this point that I need to put my material in the machine with the painted side down and then I can start making my part.